Margaret Stout, and you're watching The Yard. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of The Yard. This episode we're at the Harry Moore Memorial Bagpipe Drum and Competition in Riverside, the Canyon Crest Country Club. Now, I don't know a lot about bagpipes, but we've played this thing the last three years. So I'm gonna interview a couple people and they're gonna to explain to us where the bagpipes come from. What is a bagpipe? And why? who is Harry Moore? That's another good question. So anyway, thanks for watching this episode. And I hope you enjoy all things bagpipe. Let's launch it. Now I am standing here with Chris Jensen, my friend, my lawyer, and the grand poopa of the Harry Moore Memorial Bagpipe and Drum Competition. How you doing today, my brother? Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here. You oh, guys man. are just fantastic. This is our favorite show of the year. We've done it three years now, and Chris is actually stepping down from being the grand, what, what's your title? Event organizer. Event, How's that for a great title? Event organizer. Now my lawyer here just got him a big fancy boat, so he's gonna step down, let other people run it, and me and my lovely wife, we're gonna come jump on his boat. And did, did you actually invite her? Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't invite my I, wife? I told her she couldn't wear a shirt. That's the rules. That's, that's the rules. No, no said, shirts on the boat. No, she's got great tits. Okay, well, we're in then. Yeah, you don't mind us too, man. This is going to be a fun <laughs> boat ride. Awesome. <laughs> so we're looking forward to it. So who is Harry Moore? Let's talk about the boat some more. I like okay, that. Okay, we'll talk Her, about Harry Moore was a, a, a founder of the, the drum line in the, in the U-Star Pipe Band. Okay. He learned in Scot his trade in Scotland. He uh, just a great old guy that taught kids how to play the drums, the Scottish style. And hundreds and hundreds of kids and we got we were fortunate enough to have him at the very end of his career and he died on a day of our competition and it just tore us all up and and so one of the things we could do that we thought we could do is honor him with an event and so we named the event the harry moore because that's awesome it's just you know you have a leader of, of something that's musical that's just got heart and spirit uh -huh. so yeah he was the man he was absolutely the man. That's great. Now, the history of the bagpipe. Are you familiar with where the bagpipe came from? Quite a bit. It's it actually derived from the Middle East. Uh, it was an attempt to make the music nonstop. Because if you're blowing a flute or something, you take a breath, music stops. And so people in the Middle East decided we wanted nonstop sound. So they decided get some kind of animal skin, make fill it with air, the, the bladder of there, and you can squeeze and keep blowing air out while you take your breath. Well, throughout Europe it modified. It gets across the channel into England and up into the highlands of Scotland. And they actually made that thing so much better. And, and that's what you've been seeing today is the great Highland bagpipe. Wow. Goat skin is what it is. And wow. so you, you, you season it with weird, nasty smelling stuff. And you know, you have wood reeds and it's just a disgusting earth instrument. But you know what? It just gets everybody right here. Oh yeah, it does. And, and it makes me wonder, you look at a bagpipe. Who in the hell that too came up with this thing <laughs> yes well that's what happens when you drink that much scotch you get creative <laughs> well, we like scotch so you know you can it's like i think i need an oboe i think i need a clarinet and that's what you have you have single note instruments up on the shoulder and you have the basic nine note flute wow so now you can have this little ensemble playing with you that's the beauty of it interesting i know you guys will all be interested because you know most of my friends out there that watch the show we're all a bunch of old punk rockers and don't get to hang out with like real musicians. I'm going to speak for myself, not all of you. <laughs> you know, some of you guitar players don't fucking say shit, you know. Us drummers and singers, we, we just whatever. But it's kind of cool to hang out. It's real cool to hang out with these people here. We've been here for three years now, and I hope that we can continue Wouldn't on this Wouldn't do show. it without you. Yeah. Wouldn't do it without you. Hookers forever. Hookers forever. But thank you very much, Chris, for thank spending you. a minute on the yard. And uh, you got anything you want to say to anybody? Tell anybody to go to hell or anything? Or? Not a chance. Come see my boys wherever they're at. See the That's outfit. what I'm telling you. Hey, hey, hey. Ready? Ready? Oh. All right. That's it. <laughs> Again, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks Love for being here. Look forward to jumping on your boat, seeing some titties. We're in.
Maybe our, maybe our team. It may be after the wise win, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Cheers. Yeah, we're here at the Canyon Crest Country Club filming an episode on a bagpipe competition today. One of the things in a bagpipe competition is somebody has to judge the competition. So I'm here with Lauren. Lauren is a judge in the bagpipe competition. How you doing today, brother? Good, man. Good, Jason. How are you? Good, good. good. What is the criteria? What are you looking for when you judge a bagpiper? There's a couple of things. A good, clean execution, good, clean fingering, nice sound from the bagpipe, and then musical content. There's a nice musical rhythm into the tunes. Nice. So it's three things. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, is there anything else like that steps out? Can somebody step out and hey, do a little solo? If all three, some people just have good clean finger work, uh -huh. but little music. Some people have got lots of music, but they make mistakes. So it's a, that's what makes it hard to judge because it's a juggling act. If somebody has all three good pipes, good execution, and good music, then that's what you want. Then they're spot on. Yes. Huh? Where are you from, Lord? West Coast of Scotland, Campbelltown. Campbelltown. Yeah. Say hi to your friends in Campbelltown. Slangevar, Campbelltown. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, we're gonna hang out, interview a few more people. I just wanted to know, what, how do you, how do you judge a bagpipe competition? Yeah, that's it. You just listen. The sound of the bagpipes, how clean the fingering is, and then the music. You've got to put the Gaelic into it. Put okay. music in it. Now, yeah. what, where did the bagpipe originate? Do you know? Do you know the, the uh, history of it? Middle East, biblical times. Oh wow! Yeah, mentioned in the Bible thousands of years ago. That's not what yeah. you think of. No, when right? You think of bagpipe. That's right. You think of Scotland or, yeah. or Ireland. That's right. But Middle Middle East. Yeah. Huh? And then wow. it came through Europe, stopping in each country. So most European countries have got bagpipes, but they're all different. Wow. So the bagpipe you know today is the Scottish one, but Irish have beautiful bagpipes as well. Uh -huh. The French, the Britons, you know. Yeah. So each country's got its own. Nice. Yeah. Now I heard rumors that you toured with Madonna. <laughs> Who told you that? I heard it earlier. Is Cut! That, is that true? <laughs> yes, I did, yes. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah 2004, reinvention tour. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, playing bagpipes. So what did you do for her? Just play a couple of songs? I played in uh, Into the Groove. It's a Scottish part of Into the Groove. Nice. Yeah. How was that? Good, yeah. People loved it. Yeah, I bet they yeah. did. Yeah. And you got toured with Donna. Yeah. How yeah. fun was that? 56 shows. A million people live. Wow. Yeah. A million people live. Yeah. See, on the yard, we get all kinds of cool people <laughs> on here. And Lauren, cheers. Cheers. Lunge. Lawrence, cheers, Lawrence, cheers. Thank you for doing it. I am here with Colin. Now, Colin is one of the world, what are the, what are the most awesome bagpipers in the whole world. Last year, I got the opportunity to play with him in the cup, in the kitchen piping. Explain to us what kitchen piping is. Kitchen piping is basically after all of the sort of super technical and structured piping is done for the day. Kitchen piping is a way for all the pipers to kind of let loose and just and not be judged by you know serious judges. Uh -huh. and just let kind of the crowd take over. So just jam basically. Yeah, basically you get to finally kind of jam, let your hair down, and just play and try and entertain. Nice. And it's nice as a bagpiper to entertain in a proper way, yeah. and the crowd seems to like it. You know? Now I didn't realize there's a there's a bagpipe sense of humor. A couple Somewhere. years ago, I was here. I was watching this thing, and I'm right. three years ago. I'm sitting here, and everybody in the crowd starts laughing. Right. And I, I didn't understand it. So there's actual bagpipe humor. What were they laughing at? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Honestly, I think that's a super inside. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I mean, I think I think I, I think when you, I know. I think maybe what you're talking about is like when you see a bagpiper play, and certain things happen. Yeah, certain, during the performance, correct. people laugh. Yeah, people laugh for. I think they're so used to connecting bagpipes with sad stuff uh -huh. that you see somebody sort of playing the instrument the way it's meant to be played and it's being played like you know entertainingly and energetically and there's different things that you know the common person doesn't get to see a, yeah. a really good bagpiper all every day absolutely so when they do things that they don't see it's just they're kind of entertained by it and that's where that laughter maybe comes yeah. from you know most bit. people you see a bagpiper at a funeral or a wedding yeah. But unfortunately for, yeah unfortunately <laughs> but something like this I've really had a great time the last three years yeah. hanging out. These people are so much fun. Right. Uh, where are you from, Colin? I'm from San Diego. San Diego. Yeah, born and raised in San Diego, North North County, San Diego, and uh, I've been basically Southern California my whole life, and my family was involved in pipes. I've been around it since I was a kid, so I kind of grew up doing it. So you want to say to anybody in the yard, say hi to anybody? No, it's Tell cool, anybody man. to go fuck just, off? No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> thanks we're for having me, we're man. We're allowed to do this. Thanks for having hey, me, bro. Thanks, Colin. Thanks for playing with me last year. That yeah, last year we had a great time. He fun. won the competition, and he kind of coached me along. No, no. He joined me, and you, we did good. You played the Brady, but we played the Brady Bunch. Did we? I think we played the See, Brady I Bunch. I remember. I forget that part. 
So that's the stuff I just omit from my memory. The uh, stuff that I kind of just want to forget that yeah. I did. I think we played the Brady Bunch. Hey, yeah. you know what? You got to get the people involved. You reel them in with stuff like that, that's and then you it. play the real stuff. Colin, <laughs> thank you very much. Any <laughs> websites you want to promote? Uh, or? Check out Colin, uh, ColinArmstrongMusic.com. ColinArmstrongMusic.com. Yeah. Check this guy out. If you're into pipes, you've ever seen pipes, <laughs> like pipes, this is the guy that wins every competition. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, uh, come on. Close enough. Come on, close enough. I try my best. Yeah, you, you're, Thanks, you're being bro. modest. Thanks, bro. Right on. Yeah, Cheers. Like Welcome to this episode of The Yard. We got a very special guest today. We got Lance Armstrong coming in. Hey, where, where are you going, Lance? Oh, wait, here he comes now. So we're going to interview Lance Armstrong, ask him about his drug use, see what he's up to. Really excited. Hey, Lance, where are you going? I told you guys I got a really special guest today. Today I've got my mom. How you doing, mom? Oh, I'm doing great. Good, good. Where, why don't you tell everybody where you're from? I'm from Piedmont, Oklahoma. We used to live in Huntington Beach, but we're back in Oklahoma and here on a great vacation in February. Awesome. It's good to see you. Yeah, I haven't been out here in a couple years. It's, it's been a while. Been, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, she's out here to see our new nephew. Uh, my brother Craig just had a baby named Miles, so she came out to see her new grandkid. And all the grandkids. And all the grandkids. So she, what are you going to make for us today, Mom? Well, I'm going to make potato salad. People seem to like it, so you asked me to do it, and I'm happy to. All right, cool. Well, we're going to go make potato salad. Thanks for coming in. My pleasure. All right, I'm here with my mom, and she's going to make her famous potato salad. Where did you learn this recipe? From my mother and my aunt. They were sisters, and they kind of had different styles, so it's just kind of a combination of the two. But most of my family thinks that it's a lot like my mom's used to be. Okay. So. That's where I learned. Nice. Now, did you grow? Up, how did you grow up? Did you grow up in a city, on a farm? No, on a farm in the middle of Oklahoma. Wheat farm, cattle, hay, that type of thing. And uh, we had harvest hands during the summer, and my mom cooked huge meals three times a day for a whole bunch of guys. And she had a big garden, so she raised a lot of food. And of course, they had their own eggs and their own beef, that type of thing. And uh, she just was a great cook. Had a lot of practice at it. Awesome. Well, we're going to watch her put together her world famous Oklahoma potato salad. <laughs> You're watching the yard. I'm El Pork Chopper. Ask me anything. Did you ask Pork Chop if you could ask him anything? Why is my left nut bigger than my right nut? That's a good question. And cut tune in and Pork Chop will answer. Why is Tom's left nut bigger than his right nut? <laughs> 